the city of Salem, a small town founded in 1626 in the state of Massachusetts, home of the infamous witch trials in 1692. On this episode of Spirits with Spirits, we are going to cover three of the most haunted locations in the city of witches. What's up guys, I'm Jake. And I'm Tyler. And welcome back to another episode of Spirits with Spirits. So as you know, we have to start this series off with a paranormal drink. What do we have on the block today? So we wanted our drink to be witch related given the topic of the yeah. video, but we really couldn't find much. No, everything was like special order or we had to go to a different store and we were already in the middle of a total wine. So that wasn't an option. So we're gonna get a little creative this time. We're gonna create our own mixed drink. Let's call it Witch's Brew to kind of go with the theme and the vibe. We did not find this recipe online. We're just gonna make it. So totally, if it- Totally off the dome. If it's not good, it's Jacob's fault. What? <laughs> so these are your ingredients and tools that you're gonna need for this drink. First, you're gonna need a knife. Next, our main alcohol. You may have seen this one before. Dirty Devil Vodka. Throwback to, I believe, our first episode of Spirits with Spirits. I thought we rated that one pretty well too. You might be wondering what the knife's for. Well, that's because we're gonna need a lime. And probably the most important aspect of this drink, giving it its nice, rich color, is going to be a very cheap raspberry liqueur. And he's not lying by cheap. I believe this <laughs> bottle cost us $7. Seven bucks. Our trip to Total Wine this week was not nearly as expensive as our previous trips. No. So we do have another ingredient. Sprite. Sprite. So let's get into making this drink. Limes cut. We've got the limes cut. Does it smell good? No. Okay. So we're gonna start out. We're gonna do two, two shots, shots of, of vodka. vodka. Whatever vodka you have at home, give our two shots. There's one. And if it pours over a little bit, that's okay. Get a little messy with it. Do not drive after drinking this drink. Nope. Uh, I don't know if this was the proper way to cut these limes. I didn't really know what we were doing them. I just cut them. Ooh, I just spilled on the counter. Like I cut a lime. Well, there's vodka on the counter. Try not to do that when you're making your drink. So, this one, I wouldn't recommend spilling given the coloring. We're not responsible for if you stain your countertops. Mr. Stack's liqueur. Let's raspberry. go, Mr. Stack. So we're gonna go based off of color. Just know that I'm using the shot glass to do so. So let's start with one. Let's do one in here. It pours very thick. Dip that in the glass so we don't get it on the countertop. Oh, I feel like that may all, may be maybe just one part. All we need. That's pretty dark. All right. Yeah, I like that. What? Okay, so one part raspberry liqueur. What did we call this? Uh, this is witch's brew. This might be more of a witch's blood. Do Ooh. witches have blood? I would hope so. All right, we can call it witch's blood. All right, new drink name. Witch's blood. So now, Sprite. Sprite. We're just gonna top this up until the glass because up until here is all alcohol. So we wanna give a little Diffuse bit of that. a, a little bit of a non-alcoholic flavor. Plus this will carbonate it, so it'll make it very refreshing, especially for you Floridians just like us that have to enjoy our October month in the 80s. Uh, Think of this as like a cherry limeade. Yeah, oh, well, raspberry. The red just makes me think it's cherry. It's not. We should have done cherry. That would have been good. Now that I think about it, we should have. Lime, go in. We're gonna in. squeeze it in. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If you washed your lime beforehand, pop it in the drink. Boom. Witch's blood. That's your witch's blood. This is also why you need your knife. Yes. Now kids, ask your parents to use <laughs> Kids shouldn't be drinking alcohol. You. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah. If you're not 21, do not make this drink. Unless you live in Europe. To make a along. Shirley Temple. You can, exactly. Shirley Temples are good. Cherry Sprite is one of my favorite sodas of all time. See, Sprite, Sprite cranberry. cranberry is my... I don't really freak with Sprite Cranberry. No, you don't? No, because I like cherry so, too much. let me even one up the Sprite Cranberry. Cranberry ginger ale. I'm not sure that I've ever actually tried it. It's so good. All right, So moment of truth. We've got Witch's Blood. It's even got like, it's fizzing. It's very Halloween-esque, I think. You, you could even call it, what, what was the first name? Witch's Brew. You could call it that. It's got a little, the lime is really yeah. making it 
So Gross. when you squeeze the lime, it has these little hairs. So let's let's look at these again. Turn it down. As There's much your as you little can. hairs. Yeah, look at that. And there's your drink. It's a very nice color. It's not dark red. It's so, blood red, you know? Yeah, fingers crossed it's good. <laughs> okay. Very strong. Definitely strong. But I like it. Oh, it's strong. I think if we used a more expensive liqueur, <laughs> it would be a lot better. Um, that's, that's literally the only taste I'm getting right now. It's yeah. just that thick, syrupy it's real thick. liqueur. I can't wait till I get to about like there and I can put some more, more Sprite, Sprite in, in there. there. Yeah. Cause uh, that's gonna really save it for me. Now I also noticed, not very fizzy. It's not. That could have total, changed the flavor. Total Wine sold us some old Sprite. September 9th of this year. No way. We, we got, got old Sprite. Okay. Total Wine, I want a refund on my $1.99 back. Let's make these magically disappear and put more less carbonated Sprite in there. You have to keep drinking like you said, remember? Uh, oh, that's gross, man. Oh. <laughs> that is rough. I think we sold them. I think uh, everyone wants to make this drink now. Man, I think this bad Sprite also is not helping. No, the point of the drink was to be carbonated. Like a nice, refreshing, crisp a summer Summer drink. day, although it's fall. But that was the vibe. Excuse me. All right, let's try it with the extra Sprite. Okay, it's magical. It's better. Yeah. Okay. I can get behind so, that. So we're gonna have to give the original recipe. It's still not great. It's not, but. Cause I would give the original like a four <laughs> out of 10. Yeah, I was thinking like a four and a half, maybe a five. Use higher quality ingredients Yeah, use well. higher ingredients. Use a not expired Sprite. Um, don't buy the one that's $7, $7 off the shelf. Don't cheap out. I think I'm ready for my rating for the. Uh, New one? Original rating, four and a half, five. With more Sprite, I'm gonna go six, seven. I'm going six. You know? Yeah. Not our best drink on the show. No. But a drink Not the worst. What did we give? <laughs> Pirate's give Blood? Pirate's Blood. That was Bad. a low rating. That, that rating was... was not good. Yeah, I'll have this over that any day. Less alcohol, more Sprite. And we're gonna see you on the couch. So today, as you know, we are talking about the city of which is Salem, Massachusetts. And it's gonna be a pretty creepy one. This is probably one of the most historic towns in all of the United States. And there's so many stories that go along with the town and so many movies, so many books, so many TV shows. I think this is gonna be a good one. So let's not mess around any longer. We've got our drinks. They're not great, but it's okay. Let's get right into it. Three of the most haunted places in Salem. So first we're gonna talk about the Hawthorne Hotel. The Hawthorne Hotel was built in 1924 and didn't open until July 23rd of 1925. There's even been some filming that was done at this hotel, including 1970, where they filmed Bewitched at the hotel. They also filmed in 2015, where Robert De Niro and Jennifer Lawrence had filmed their movie Joy. And there was even a seance for Harry Houdini in 1990. Many believe that this hotel was actually used as part of the Underground Railroad and that there are still those tunnels underneath it to this day. So we did some research on this hotel and found a couple of Reddit stories of people who've stayed there and have had some very interesting experiences. So according to one Reddit user, they stayed at the Hawthorne Hotel and throughout the night when they were sleeping, they would wake up and they would hear the faucets turning on and off randomly. That'd be so creepy. I feel like if you're sleeping and you just hear full blast, just I would the lose my mind. Bad plumbing or ghosts? Who's to say? But it like- It is an old building. Yeah, but come on, the faucet is turning on. Hey, at least they're clean. That's true. They're cleanly ghosts. So when they're possessing you, you won't feel the nasty grossness of, of the slime and goo. Yeah, exactly. You get it, you get it. This user also had an experience where they would use the elevator to try to get to the room. And instead of going up, it would take them to the basement, which was very old and very dusty, they said, and said it had a lot of uh, old furniture that was just kind of laying around. So a weird place to take them when they're trying to go up to their room and then they're like, oh, now I'm in a horror movie basement. Yeah, that would be really creepy, especially that kind of goes back to like the tunnels. Unfinished business, they're trying to have their story told and they're like, here, 
Let me get Let you me as take close you as it. I can, yeah. Or maybe they just went an extra floor down and they were tr really trying to get them back to the lobby and saying, hey, get out. <laughs> get out of here. That reminds us, uh, reminds me, not us. Sorry, it reminds yeah, I don't me. I about to happen. Literally two of our investigations, we've had issues with elevators where we had the elevator that had just opened itself up and yeah, was sitting on our floor. Yes. And then we had the Safety Harbor elevator. Actually, we heard knocking heard noises We heard knocking, in yeah. Man, so, we have had some really creepy experiences with elevators. That's true. Ghosts feed off of energy. Literally an elevator is just a box so of energy. much energy. Maybe it draws them to it, so. I like that theory. There are other stories of guests who have stayed there claiming that they've had demonic dreams when they stay there. Also, some other guests have reported seeing furniture being moved throughout their room and apparently seeing a ghostly woman wander the halls. No, thank you. The furniture moving alone. Another throwback to a previous video. Remember the Reddit story where we talked about when he went to the haunted graveyard, literally like his chair moved in his bedroom at night. Just imagine, imagine you're in this hotel room, like you're already freaked out because this hotel is almost a hundred years old. You wake up and the chair that was once on the other side of the room from in front of a desk is now just sitting right next to your bedside facing you. I mean that you have to leave. You yeah. have to leave. Unless but you're ghost hunting, you have to leave. I'm canceling my trip. Bro, I'm having a couple more of those and just <laughs> trying to roll with it. <laughs> like, I like to be able to see stuff and just waking up to something like that, I feel like- That lose my mind. That would throw me over the edge. And there's also a story of a young boy who apparently died at that hotel who still roams the hallways and plays in the lobby, whatever that's supposed to mean. Oh my gosh. That was in the kitchen. What was that? It sounded like plastic that knocked over. It sounded like someone hit something. Well, that was weird. Interesting. So within the hotel, the most haunted rooms are claimed to be room 325 and 612. Within these rooms, guests have claimed to feel their sheets being pulled at night by someone that they cannot see. And they've also seen the full body view of a woman in the mirror looking at them. An apparition alone would be scary, but seeing no apparition and then a woman in the mirror, I think that just brings that scariness to that next level. That's like Insidious. Yeah. Ooh, like Oculus too. That's another good one. Have you seen no, Oculus? No, I haven't. Oculus. This month, you guys need to watch that movie. <laughs> it is one of the scariest movies ever. It messes with your head so much. Like you don't know what's going on. Oh. I recommend it 10 out of 10. Wow. Yeah. High praise. Yeah. Add it to the list. So there have also been six fires at the Hawthorne Hotel since its completion in 1925. Lots of people in different mediums believe that these fires were caused by the spirits in the hotel, whether they believe it's from the spirits from the Underground Railroad, or if they believe it's this woman that shows up in the mirrors or down the hallways, or even the boy that appears, whoever it may be out of the spirits that have been known to walk these halls, they believe that these spirits are the culprits for starting these fires. So these next two locations, we both did research on separately. So you're gonna get our genuine fresh, reactions. genuine reactions. I'm gonna be talking about the witch house. So scary name, starting yeah. off. I mean, we got our witch's brew right here. Oh, we so. should have brought, we should bring our witch's brew to the witch house. I think that's a good idea. Let's see what they think about this. So. I bet they'd also rate it pretty poorly. I will say, the more I drink it, the better it gets. I've had not much to eat at all today. Yeah, so every sip just gets better because you're slowly and slowly going down. Yeah. The witch house is the only building standing in Salem currently that has direct ties to the Salem witch trials in 1692. So the witch house, also known as the Jonathan Corwin house, was built in 1642. It was called the Jonathan Corwin house because of Judge Jonathan Corwin, who was a magistrate that had direct ties to the witch trials that occurred in Salem. He had a direct tie to basically who died of the 19 people. He was one of the deciding factors. Is this person gonna live or is this person gonna get burned at the stake? Oh, so he was sending him to the stake. Yeah. Oh, so, so we probably don't like that guy. No, huh? we don't like this guy. This guy is bad. So the witch house in Salem, just like many other sites around the area, is presumed to be haunted. There's been numerous accounts of paranormal activity within the house including the feeling of a very cold temperature drop along with a heavy feeling atmosphere. So there's even been reports of the feeling of being watched along with a very oppressive feeling in areas that were directly related to Judge Corwin. I feel like that checks out. I feel like that makes sense. You know, yeah. this guy who's very, clearly got a lot of bad energy around him, making yeah. a lot of bad decisions, you know, throughout Just, the time. It would make sense it. that his kind of 
bad energy would just kind of linger on, I feel. For sure, I think that that's probably what people are feeling is just his energy still in that location. He's just watching over people. And he's like, get out of my house. I can't burn you at the stake, but I'll burn you I'll with my eyes. I'll make you feel bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So visitors and staff have also reported seeing a shadowy figure going in between different rooms, but it, it's very fleeting. So there's never been any idea of who this possibly could be. It's just basically the outline of men and women. Along with the shadowy figures, people have also reported hearing talking or whispers within empty parts of the house. That does make sense though, to where it's like, they don't really know who they're seeing when they see like figures, because I feel like there were so many people impacted by this one dude. Yeah. And I feel like there were so many people that this dude talk to a lot of those people would be just kind of roaming you yeah, know like it's just trauma i mean exactly the house itself was never the site of any of these killings but they may have gone to the house after the killings they may have been at this house protesting the deaths of their loved absolutely. ones absolutely so i be. think that trauma just from what these people are feeling the immense sadness of losing that loved one you could honestly have hundreds of different people that the, these whispers oh, and yeah, voices could be sure. or shadowy figures because it's just somebody trying to get their story out there or be him just... Just lingering in his place. Yeah, just quietly telling people to get out of his property. Very interesting. Lastly, there are reports of orbs or flashes in people's photography at the location, which is a very common thing for haunted, haunted locations. locations. If you work at the witch house, let us know. We'll be there tomorrow. So whether or not the ghost stories of this location are true, the historic significance of the property and the direct connection to the Salem Witch Trials make this the perfect location for paranormal activity. Yeah, you better freaking catch up, bro. So nasty. I'm past the point of gross. I feel like I've had too much and now I'm just in it. I'm just, uh, I'm just yeah. drinking something. I'm drinking the witch's food. All right, and now moving on to the third haunted location in Salem that we're gonna be discussing tonight, the Joshua Ward house. Built in 1784, Joshua Ward was the original owner of this house. It's actually the first brick building built in Salem, Massachusetts. That's pretty cool because even the witch house is just complete wood. Yeah, so definitely a very important architectural landmark, if you yeah. will. This house was actually known for its beautiful interior woodwork and the beautiful brick outside. So much, in fact, that George Washington himself requested to stay at this house back in 1789. So a beautiful house, you know, our first president wanted to stay there. You may be wondering, is it haunted? Like what's going on with the paranormal there? This house was actually built on a plot of land where the old sheriff used to live during the time of the Salem witch trials. This sheriff, his name was George Corwin, and he was actually nicknamed the Strangler because of, uh, well, I think you can probably understand what he was doing to those who were accused during the witch trials. Corwin, is that any relation to Jonathan <laughs> Corwin? Wait a second, so you said Corwin. Is there any <laughs> relation? I'm laughing, sorry, sorry, okay, I got you. <laughs> give, me two, give me two seconds. Focus in, lock in, there we go. Wait a second, so you said Corwin. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Too much of this witch's brew, if you will. Wait a second, you said Corwin? <laughs> yeah, I said Corwin. I don't think I can make it through this. <laughs> we, take, we take turns laughing. <laughs> Wait a second, is that any relation to Jonathan Corwin? <laughs> uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Who's Jonathan Corwin? The witch house. What? Jonathan Corwin was- Oh, sh Yeah. Oh, I bet they're related. Yeah. Jonathan Corwin and George Corwin relation. Oh, wow. So he's- So Jonathan the Corwin, the witch house, mm -hmm. was the uncle of the sheriff, wow. Sheriff Corwin. Some families have football players and brainiacs, but this family, the Corwin family, had murderers. It's just terrible people. Good to know, wow, yeah. good connection. Nice connection, that's, I caught me off guard when I heard Corwin. Since 2015, this house has been used as a museum and a hotel, and many people believe it's one of the most haunted places in America due to its very dark past. So there are three main spirits said to haunt the Joshua Ward house. Number one, the strangler himself, the sheriff. From SpongeBob. Number two, Giles Corey, Gills Corey, I don't know how to pronounce it, G-I-L-E-S Corey. And last but not least, the witch. So let's get right into it. So Giles Gills, I'm so sorry, I do not know how to pronounce the name. Corey, we'll call them, was one of the 19 accused during the witch trials. Accused and you can say acquitted because unfortunately they were killed. They 
unlike the others, were not hung though. They were crushed by rocks. Oh my gosh. By none other than Sheriff Corwin himself. The Strangler. The Strangler. The Strangler, but he's the boulder now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the boulder is it's confused. So naturally, many guests still believe that Corey still remains in the house. They experience very classic paranormal activities, such as, you know, cold spots when you enter a room, items being moved from here to there. Weirdly enough though, there's one particular trait that uh, this spirit, believed to be Corey, kind of leaves behind. They will burn candles, but they'll burn them in the shape of an S, which is very strange. So like, first of all, people will find candles in places that they don't necessarily belong. Yeah. And then they'll see that they're burned, but then they'll see that they're burned in the shape of an S. Some people believe that they're actually trying to point out the sheriff. They're trying to get the revenge on the sheriff and show that like, you know, the sheriff, the S is yeah. the one to blame for all of their, their problems. Very strange. Interesting. The boulder. So the next spirit that is said to haunt this location is the sheriff himself, the strangler. Obviously the location is built on his old home. Like it definitely makes sense that he would still be there. Guests have reported literally feeling strangled while staying there when it was a hotel, which definitely correlates to it being the strangler himself who is still residing as a spirit there. Guests have also had burn marks and scratches all over their arms, you know, throughout the night or when they wake up. And that also kind of leads right into the strangler, you know, the sheriff who is known for doing those things to the accused. In, in the afterlife, he is still attacking people and he's still, still going hostile. after people. Yeah, yeah. Just like Jonathan Corwin. Bad people. Once bad in the living life, always bad in the afterlife. These occurrences also happen specifically in the second floor. So I'm not sure if it's still a hotel or not, but if it is, second floor is where you need to go if you're looking to be strangled. And lastly, a third spirit that is said to haunt this location is called the witch. They call the spirit the witch because they're known to target men specifically. Men specifically feel very nauseous and unwelcomed and uncomfortable when they're there, as well as literally scratching them. That means we can't go, right? Well, I think that means we can go. And I think that means that we'll have an even better time. Because, because they won't like us. Because they won't like us. So I think we should go. Jonathan Ward House, you work there? Let us know. One of the most interesting pieces of evidence that has been related to the house was in 1981, when a realtor who was working at the house at the time was taking pictures of his staff outside. He was using a Polaroid camera, taking pictures, wouldn't expect anything crazy to happen, except something crazy happened. He took a photo of one of his staff who was blonde and there at the time, and he received a picture that looks like this. Oh dear. <laughs> They're not blonde. <laughs> not blonde. Uh, honestly doesn't even look like they're really there. It looks like a weird ghostly image of someone. Yeah. So that's very freaky. Uh, and many people believe that that is the witch. Let's say this is not hoaxed. If I took a Polaroid and I saw that on that Polaroid printed out, I'm ass and elbows out that house. I'm never returning. Like we do the ghost hunting stuff and everything and we're always looking for evidence, but I feel like the moment that. I get something like that, I will know that it is real and I will never have to do another ghost hunt again. Your journey is complete. <laughs> it's done. So this witch spirit that, you know, appeared in the picture and is known for making men feel uncomfortable, people believe that they're actually one of the 19 who was accused and was apparently abused by the sheriff himself. Therefore, why they stay at that house. It definitely makes sense that there are a lot of spirits who are just trapped in the city and this residual energy that is just repeating over and over and over again and why there are so many spirits in the city of Salem. Yeah. And honestly, I think we need to make a trip there. I think it'd be, oh, do. it'd be really cool. It'd be very interesting to get to hear their stories and be able to share that. And I would love to make a trip up there and see what we can find. See Absolutely. if anybody wants to talk to us or if the witch wants to show up and then that'll be our last video. <laughs> and that's it. We take the picture so. of the witch and then we leave. And I was able to find one Reddit story that I found very interesting about this specific location. Someone who was staying there when it was a hotel woke up in the middle of the night to their bed violently <laughs> shaking. Uh, if that doesn't say haunted, I don't know what that says. You know, I feel like that's, I keep wanting to say the boulder, but he's not the boulder, he's the strangler. All like, I'm hearing is after all of these stories, I feel like we need to make a little trip to Salem. Gotta do it. <laughs> Final rating on this drink is not good. It makes you feel good, but it does not taste good. But the more nope. you drink it, the better it will taste. I guess I have to finish it all. Bottoms up, here's to another episode of Spirits with Spirits. Hey, clink. Mm -mm.
Thumbs down for the drink. Thumbs up for the stories. Let us know what you think. If you've been to Salem, let us know your personal experiences. Let us know what you've experienced or any pictures you've had or anything. And if you have any paranormal inspired drinks or concoctions that we could create, let us know in the comments below. Spirits for spirits, we're done. Our drinks are done and we're gonna see you in the next one, so. Peace out. Peace out, Girl Scout.